affordable national park family travel. Let's roll. The first tip may not feel so exciting, but it can be because these are national parks we're talking about. And that tip is stay close to home. Check out the parks in your area. Maybe you've been there before, maybe they didn't impress you, but once you've resolved that you are going to go to a park, find all of the different ways that the park is wonderful. You're going to go beneath the surface. You're going to find all of the sites. You're going to do the learning that it takes to really grow your appreciation of a park. Even parks that you have been to before can be really great places to begin. So first tip is stay close to home. Then you can make it a day trip, a driving trip. You may be able to camp. You may be able to go during less expensive times of the year. So staying close to home is the first tip. The second tip that I have for you is to go to parks that are in close proximity to friends and family. So then you'll be able to stay perhaps with the friends and the family and you'll save on your room fees. Now, I only have a family of four, but it's often the hotels and the places that we need to stay in close proximity to the parks that are really the most cost prohibitive of all of the expenses when it comes to our national park travel. So when we can find a park that's close to friends or family and be able to sort of couch surf there for a while, that's a fantastic way that makes that trip far more affordable for us. The third tip, you knew it was coming, tent camp. Or, back it up, just camp, okay? So you have some options here. Number one, you can tent camp. Now, I have a very difficult relationship with tent camping, although I still do it, I still have lots of ambitions about developing a love of backpacking, so I want to get better at tent camping, and we've certainly done that in some parks. In fact, I do have a little story about when we were in Olympic National Park. We stayed at the campground that was right on the coast, and we tent camped. We brought our tent and all of our camping supplies all the way from Texas to Washington State, so that we could save some money and tent camp at the park while we were visiting. So we did, we tent camped and overnight, I had some sort of visitor that was trying to poke through the outside of the tent and I was sleeping on the outside of the four of us within the tent and it was sort of poking at me all night long. It was very startling but it makes for a really good story. So the tent camping is one of those type B types of fun where maybe in the moment, it's not always the best moment, but in hindsight, it makes for great stories. So tent camping can save you a lot of money. Even if you just partially tent camp, you bring your gear and maybe one night you stay in a hotel and then two nights you might tent camp and then maybe you stay with family or friends another night. That's a way to cut down on your expenditures because tent camping can cost as little as 10 or $15, maybe up to 35 in some NPS campgrounds, but it's a great way to offset some of those more expensive stays that you might want to indulge in so you can have a better shower. The other option for camping was actually new to me several years ago and we started this option before we ended up getting a travel trailer. The second option for camping is actually to stay in camper cabins. Okay, so sometimes when you rent a cabin, it's still a situation where you're spending a couple hundred to thousands a night for the cabin. I'm not talking about that type of cabin. That's fantastic if you want to go that route. But a way to do camping on the cheap to make it more affordable if you don't want to tent camp, but you don't want to lay out all of the money for the expensive cabins is to rent camper cabins. 
These are bare bones cabins where you walk in and there is an elevated bed with a plastic covered mattress and you bring all of your own bedding. You go to the store and maybe grill outside. They usually have a grill right outside of the cabin. It's a bare bones cabin with only a couple of bed frames and mattresses. That's a fantastic way to cut down on your overnight expenses. In fact, we have a big adventure coming up this summer where we're gonna spend many nights in the camper cabins, a couple of nights in tents, and then a couple of nights in nicer, more expensive hotels. But it really helps to regulate that price. And just so you have a sense of what that price can be, these camper cabins can be around 75 to maybe $120 a night at a lot of places that we generally stay. So it's a great option to look for the camper cabins. The fourth way that you can save money visiting the national parks is to visit multiple national parks that are all in closer proximity to one another on a single trip right? So if I want to go out and visit Badlands National Park in South Dakota, one way that I can save money in the long run if I want to visit all the national parks is by visiting both Badlands and Wind Cave National Park while I'm in the area. Another option is if you are considering some of the Rocky Mountain National Parks. So you could go to Rocky Mountain National Park up in Estes Park. You could head down to Black Canyon of the Gunnison around five or so hours down the road. And then depending where you are coming from, you could hit up another national park or two. So when you visit multiple national parks in a single trip, certainly that can save you money in the long run if you're trying to visit all of the parks. And the fifth way that I want to share with you to save money when you visit the national parks is on the transportation side. And so I've talked a little bit about how to save money on the overnight accommodations, but now let's talk a little bit about getting to your destination. Some of these destinations are across the country. Obviously they span far and wide. We've got Maine, Florida, Alaska, down to Hawaii. So getting to some of these further national parks can be very expensive. I love a good road trip. I love the autonomy of it. I love that I'm in control. I love seeing the sights on the road. We always enjoy the road trip. However, I'm not driving all the way up to Acadia National Park. Not right now, I don't have the time. I'm in Texas. So what do I do? I'm gonna look for ways to fly free up to that area of the country. Certainly you may already have credit cards where you have certain point values. You may be able to collect gift cards and then use those towards your airfare to get to certain locations. Another great option, the one that we employ the most is really utilizing Southwest Airlines and some of their travel benefits. We collect points with Southwest Airlines and we also work towards the companion pass every year. There's a whole process involved with earning that pass and one fantastic resource that I suggest that you check out that I always enjoy tapping into is the Families Fly Free podcast and I think that they also have a website and a group. You can get a membership there. I always listen to their podcast, but we've already been employing some of those tactics for many years. The other benefit about flying Southwest Airlines, even if you have to pay out of pocket, your bags can fly free up to two per person. And that has really helped us on our national park journey because there have been many times when we've flown to Washington State, to Maine, to Alaska, 
and even to Hawaii where we have taken bags that have camping gear in them. We've taken entire tents and sleep systems to make our stays at the location less expensive knowing that our travel to those locations will be the expensive part of our trips. The other thing that I wanted to point out as I'm mentioning Hawaii, nobody ever talks about this. So this is sort of your sixth bonus. In Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, we went in 2018 and did this there. The lodge that's there will set up a tent and beds for you at the campground for at the time it was maybe 80 or 90 dollars a night we could not get into the lodge either there was not availability or we it was too expensive i can't remember exactly but we opted to take advantage of this service that set up the tent and the bedding for us in the campground. So we were able to save a tremendous amount of money. It was very comfortable, actually, maybe one of the most comfortable beds we ever stayed in, in all of Hawaii, that they set up in this campground for us. So I suggest you look into that. As time goes by, there may be other similar services that I'm just not aware of where there may be outfitters that will set up tents for you. I do know that if you are not able to carry your tenting equipment across the country or any other sporting good equipment that you might want to enjoy on your national park journey, you can rent it at the location. Now you have five tips plus a bonus tip that is specific to Hawaii, which is invaluable on how to save money when you take your family to visit the United States National Parks. I hope you get there, work towards it. It is a gift that we have given to our children and we worked hard and scrimped and saved our money in order to make it happen. And it has been life-changing for all of us. Best wishes on your journey. Can't wait to see you next time.